Hi, I'm Jill. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're a regular, welcome back. Today we have a 30 minute full body strength training circuit and you need some weights or a resistance band if you have one will work fine or you can use just your body. If you don't have weights, you can still move through movement patterns with this and some water. And your job is to look after yourself and take really good care of your body. And I will see you on the inside in just a few seconds. Welcome. It looks like Lilith is joining us today. Make sure you have your water handy and your weights and let's get moving. Let's start with a gentle warm up today. So go ahead and bring your feet underneath your hips with your toes pointing forward and just bring your hands together at heart center and we're going to start with a gentle sway. Right and left, finding your grounding. And then you can take it into a diagonal sway kind of to the front corner and the back corner, whoa, and opposite corners, looking for any sticky spots. So just moving really gently and waking up the inside of your hips. And just to remind you, your hips are deep inside of there. And then let's see if we can just circle and connect all those dots, keeping your feet grounded, but not rigid a soft connection to the ground, allowing some intrinsic movement, but still staying nice and supported. And let's reverse our circle. And notice that there's a little bit of a push-pull action that takes place with your palms pushing together and that helps you out. And just finishing this last one here, and rest, taking your feet a little bit wider now and just bring your arms up, palms facing forward and let's split the difference between front and side and we're gonna move into some scapula circles. So waking up our shoulder blades. And just seeing where you can find any sticky spots and maybe spending a little more time there and reversing. When I did this in bed this morning, it felt like my shoulder blades were not moving at all and now they're moving a bit better. So I was kind of surprised when I just started moving a second ago through this pattern, I had to, it caught me off guard. And so that's a good example of how your body is different moment by moment. So never make assumptions and rest and just lower your arms down by your side. You can bring your feet wherever you would like. Interlace your fingers and let's take some figure eights. It doesn't matter which direction, just pick a direction and move. And reverse, I'm trying my mic in a different place today, so we'll see how that goes. And again, just finding any sticky spots that are not moving so well and rest. And then we'll just move into a little bit of a wave action, getting some more motion in the upper body and reverse. Whoa, you might notice one side is not quite as coordinated as the other, which I, we have this game in my family where when we go and play with a ball, we always try and have an equal number of throws on our non-dominant side to practice, which is really good for your brain and your body. And one more here and rest. And let's just work through the feet a little bit. So bring your feet, um, toes pointing forward, and we're just gonna take some easy treading. You can put your hands on your hips if you want. And just working through Imagining that you're working through clay or mud 
and just getting one heel connected down and then the other. And coming to rest there, open the feet a little bit wider and we'll move, uh, let's take our fingertips to our shoulders, excuse me, and we'll move through a little bit of swaying with some upper body movement. Just getting everything lubricated. And reverse it. And take a couple more. Just play around. It doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. As long as you have clarity about what you're doing, it can be your own. And then rest. So let's start moving through our circuit today. Um, you'll be working in the same repetition goal, which is 12 to 14 repetitions. And we'll do two sets again. Today there's just five exercises and they're each a compound movement. So a combination of a lower body movement and an upper body movement. There really is no such thing, even when you're doing just say a bicep curl that you're working in isolation, your whole body is always involved in everything that you do, whether it's supporting your weight or holding stability or space in the background for something else to move with clarity. But anyway, let's just get moving. So go ahead and pick up your weights. Remember that the first set is for learning and a specific warm up. I'm starting with five and bring one foot in front of you and the other foot back. Bring those elbows to roughly 90 degrees and we're going to take it down and up. Take it down and up. Trying to keep your shoulders stacked over your hips. And we'll take six on one side. That's four, I think. Five. And six. And rest. Re whoa, reorganize your feet. So you're up on the ball of your back foot. Soften your hips. Bring those weights to 90 degrees roughly and float those elbows. Here we go. Take it down one, soft through the neck, two, three, four, five, and six. Rest for a second. Um, let's see, whatever, I'm going to keep my weight the same. So we'll move into a leg extension with a bicep curl. So bring one leg in front and get your weight transferred over that leg. And then this, um, well, I'll just keep moving. Send your other leg back and gently float that leg. So you're standing on one leg and one arm is curling. That's two. We'll take six. Three. Good. Four, noticing your support leg is making all those micro adjustments. And I might have one extra one here, but that's okay. Whoa. And rest. Switching sides. So the same arm is curling as leg is extended behind you. Get your weight shifted over your support leg and gently float the back leg. You can take a little bit of a tilt forward to open up some space in your lower back. And if that feels too compressed to you or your balance is off today, just put your back leg down. So here we go. One, Whoa, my balance is not so good on that side today. Two. Three, good, just like you're shaving your chin with that weight. Three, oh, did I already do three? Four, maybe. 
five, so you're aiming for six to seven on the side. Good. And rest. And our next movement pattern is a toe raise or a heel raise or a releve from the dance world with some kind of tricep something. So I'm gonna put one weight down and just use one. Coming into parallel in my lower body again and bringing that weight overhead, I'm gonna take my eyeballs up with my weight. So here I go, one, two, three, four, five, six, you're going to go all the way to 12 to 14, seven, eight, nine, okay, <laughs> ten, eleven, and 12. Whoa, so my balance is a little bit shaky this morning. Just take a rest and a sip of water for a second. And we'll move into a squat with the front raise. So I'm gonna half my weight again for this first set. So the same as that I did for triceps again. The, the lever of your arms is quite long out in front of you on this. So it's going to be just a tiny bit of weight to challenge your lower back to support it and the front of your shoulders. So don't overdo it, but definitely feel challenged in a safe way. So bringing that weight down in front of you, softening and hinging at the hips to bring the weight forward and standing nice and upright, but with ease. Take it forward and stand it up. Good, take it down and stand tall. So 12 to 14, sensing all the connections through your spine into your hips, easy through the front of your shoulder sockets, and sensing the domes of your feet grounding through the, through the floor. Good. Keep your thigh bones soft and wiggly inside of your muscle tissue. Connecting your breath, sitting way back like you're going to sit down in a low chair. And finishing out just a couple more here. And rest. I need another sip of water and then so that's our fourth exercise that we just did and our fifth one is going to be a deadlift but with a straight arm instead of a bent arm row like we've done in previous circuits it's going to be a deadlift so you're going to be bent over but with a straight arm shrug like that and it's actually pretty challenging it doesn't look like much at least for me, it's very challenging. It's very deep movement connected deep into your core. So you don't need much weight. Fives, two fives is plenty for me. Get your feet underneath your hips and your toes pointing forward. You can go a little bit wider if that's more comfortable. Soften deep in your hip sockets and find a gentle hinge forward. And then I'm just gonna shift my gaze down to the ground, but slightly forward in front of me. And then I'm going to shrug, feeling my shoulder blades gently 
sense the contour of my rib wall as they move. And on my body, it feels like as they move together, they also move up. And as they move apart, they move down. So there's kind of a together and up motion and a down and widening motion. And if you need to check in to make sure you're not gripping anywhere, it's always a good idea to see if you can shake your thigh bones. Whoa, which is like patting your head and rubbing your tummy at the same time. So just take a couple of those. That will let you know really quick if you're tensing or gripping anywhere. And take a couple more here, so a total of 12 to 14. And then you can rest unhinged. And what we'll do different, excuse me, on the second round, we'll actually come up into a standing upright position between um, each deadlift instead of staying there. So go ahead and re-wrap your weights, grab a drink of water and just rest for a second. And then we'll move through round two of all of that again. Okay, here we go for round two. I think I'll see what my body feels like about upping the weight a little bit. You can always go back if it's not right. So it doesn't hurt to try. If it's not right, you're not going to keep doing it. You're not going to injure yourself. You'll just go, okay, I tried that and it wasn't right. No big deal. So seven and a half, which is lucky because I know 10 on each side would definitely be too much. Bringing one foot forward and one foot back to the ball of the foot. Finding 90 degrees in those elbows. And we have six to seven. Here we go. Take it down one. Two. Nice and easy. Three. Four. Five. Six. Yep, that weight feels pretty good. And seven. And let's switch sides. And Again, getting your weight on the ball of that foot, but for some reason, this side is more balanced challenge for me this morning. Here we go. One, hinging both knees and hips. Two, three, four, five, and last one for me here, you can go one more if you're able, but that's plenty for me. And then moving into leg extension with a curl. So it doesn't matter which side you start on, just pick a side, get your weight organized over that standing leg, take your other leg back, little bit, bitty tilt forward if you need to, and here we go. One, Oh, okay, I just hit myself in the chin. Not so good. Be careful. Two. Three. Just play around with the back leg. It can stay still. It can move. It can hover. Four. Five. And last one. Six. Switching sides reorganize. Notice that as you shift your weight over your support leg, there's also a little spiral or a twist that happens in the upper body to organize over that leg as well. Here we go. One, two. Watch your chin. Don't, don't hit it with the weights. Three, four, five and last one for me six keep moving through seven if you can and rest 
I'm going to set my weights down for a little bit. It's not my arms, my lower back feels like it needs a little bit of a breather. And I need a sip of water. So, and then we'll move into, excuse me, releves with tricep extension. And my weights are already at seven and a half. I think I did one five last time. I think I'll keep it here at one seven and a half. Bring your feet underneath you. Bring that weight up. Keep your elbows nice and soft. And for this set, let's just choose one thing to orient to. So maybe we'll draw our attention to the bottom tips of our shoulder blades and just start with an image. See if you hang two tiny weights down the bottom, off the bottom tips of your shoulder blades to keep them nice and heavy, but still allow them to move. Here we go. One staying with that image. Two. Three. four, five, six, seven. Good, checking in with the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and 12 and rest. So squats with the front raise. Um, let's see, I think, you know, my lower back feels like that. What I did on the first set was, well, you know, I don't know, I'll try it. So I'll try a seven and a half, one seven and a half. Getting set up for your squat. Bring your feet under your hips again and sense some ease through your hip sockets and check back in with your shoulder blades on that bottom bottom tip and here we go coming down one two go ahead and bend your elbows three four Five, six, yeah, my lower back is feeling like it needs to go down, so keep going. Maybe you're on seven, eight, nine, ten, two more. 11 and 12 standing tall so we have deadlifts with shrugs uh, five five felt like pretty good to me well maybe I'll try seven and a half and then we'll come up between each set this time. So here we go, hinging forward, shrug, release, and then stand tall. That's one, hinge it forward, and shrug, release, stand tall. Good. Again. four or five and keep moving I'm just going to give you some cues that you can think of your shoulder blades are nice and slippery on your ribs your belly is soft and supported and your foot domes are sensing the ground and just finding a few more And coming to your own endpoint when you feel like you have 
reach your fatigue and we'll take a gentle cool down. Allowing your breath to soften back into your body and then just bringing one arm across. Again, we're looking for some gentle sensation down and across the top and outside of the shoulder. And just allowing your body to come into that shape and the breath to soften. And let's switch sides. Keeping the bottom tip of your shoulder nice and heavy and easy, but still fluid. And we're going to shift our weight to one side and find the front of our thigh. You can take your other hand wherever it feels good. You can maybe take it up to your chest. Making a hand to body connection can help ground you if you're feeling shaky. And switching sides. And noticing that there's even very important and gentle work in something as simple as a stretch and releasing down. And let's just roll through our spine a few times. So open your feet a little bit wider, but toes are still facing forward. And let's take a few undulations, moving like waves, feeling a connection between your head and your tailbone coming together in both directions. Good, let your tailbone release, let your head release, roll it forward, roll it back up, and curve and roll, and curve and roll, and rest, and shift one foot forward, and send your butt back. So depending on where you're sensing sensation, it might be through here. I'm actually feeling it all through the outside of that hip. And switching sides. And again, I'm feeling it through here. You might be feeling it through the inside or back side of your extended leg. Whatever your weakest link in your kinetic chain is, is where you're going to be experiencing it. So there's no wrong answer. And bring your toes forward and just stand up. Take a big breath with me. Just take a break. Sorry, a calm breath in. And an exhale. And thank you so much for joining me today. So that was our third full body circuit. And drink some water, look after yourself, make sure you have a really delicious, healthy snack, and I will see you next week. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye for now.